So here we are back at the bench and uh, just got I've got the cockpit tub laid out here um, the uh, ACES 2 um, US Air Force ejection seat just the upper portion of it that's where we're actually going to be building the harnesses and this is just out here for scale I'm not going I'm not ready to glue them on tonight but I'm going to build them and size them and, and show you guys how I do that so I've got some stuff laid out here in front of me I have a little bit of uh, 10,000 wire I have one um, connected point which would be for the five point harness for the for the two um, shoulder harnesses that would plug into the central belt chick chick and then one from the crotch and then the lap belts four or five so I've got one of those sized out already. I'm going to replicate that. I've also got some strips of, this is um, copper foil tape typically used in um, stained glass where stained glass folks will edge um, their pieces together and then they solder this shut. This just makes real, real nice, uh, smooth and uh, seamless transitions from their edges and across uh, some of their other work on there but here's a sheet of it in its uh, in its original form it's 730 seconds um, across this way and you can see I'll see if I can't bring us in here a little bit you can see how thin it is it's super super thin and if you'll notice there's a backing side and a copper foil tape side it's adhesive on one side Occasionally I'll get tricky and lift that adhesive up a little bit and sometimes slip some of my buckles and things under there. I also have some pieces picked out from my little uh, spare parts metal jar here, things that I take the opportunity to form up when I've got my metal working tools out. But I have some very small, um, I've got four rings laid out here hopefully which I'm going to flatten out into D rings. I've got one that's ovaled out for the chest harness and let me see if I can bring you guys in here and show you a little bit of my uh, ME163 cockpit. I was pretty proud of this. These seat belts are entirely scratch built. This is 30 second scale but essentially it's done with this tape. Um, a little bit of uh, thin I think for this scale I used uh, 10 thousandth by 40 thousandth um, plastruct strip on there and I didn't use this 10,000 wire I think I used uh, 28 gauge but I'm not sure what the what the width is in there but I managed to form up some of those and I think I got some fairly decent results sorry I'm coming in there too close for you guys but as you can see there's a fair bit of detail on those and uh, that's why I, that's why I keep this because it's a pretty pretty cool little little build. So anyway, um, I'm gonna try and keep my work right here in the camera, literally like right here in front of my lap as soon as I get my camera adjusted out right. Um, and we'll get going. So let me get rid of the stuff that I don't need off the bench and um, show you guys how we begin. Okay, be right back. Okay, everybody. Hi, we're back. Um, this is a reshoot of, uh, of another portion of the build that I did. I'm going to bring you guys in real quick and show you uh, what I did and what I'm going to reshoot. These are two belts, the harness belts, the shoulder harness belts that I had built that I had pressed some uh, one of the knurled handles from uh, one of my X-Acto tools in across there. This middle belt is one that I uh, added just a little bit of texture to and basically I did it with just a rag and a dowel um, and I'm going to use this third slightly thinner piece as the chest harness across the two so I'll show you guys how we do it on that. but. I am going to discard those two little piggies because I do not like the way that that fabric turned out and I've got a couple of pieces of my uh, buckle making stuff right here but let me just show you guys how I did the uh, fabric on that upper piece as well. 
So it really is just a matter of Sorry about the camera work there, shoddy camera work. It's really just a matter of laying it there and rolling it several times with the uh, rag on top of it to get that very minuscule sort of fabric pattern without that waffle look on it. It was something I wanted to play with. Um, I've I've actually done other stuff, I think you may have caught a glimpse of it on my 163 cockpit where I actually used the uh, smallest gauge or the smallest gate uh, riveting tool on my trumpeter riveter and I put some center line stitching down the middle of it and I was a little bit off and it didn't come out all that great but you know, <clears throat> the bigger the seat belt, the, the better the detail representation is going to be. So with this one I just decided to make it easy. Or So, I don't know if you guys can see any of that or not. Hopefully you can, but there is a little bit of fabric sort of texture on there. And again, that's going to be for the uh, chest harness. So, let me get a quick measurement on this and since I was already working with similar sized materials I'd taken a measurement on the seat um, I'd like I'd like those buckles to roughly hang about right here and then I'm going to attach them up here so my measurement from here to there is give or take 12 inches I've got 42 inches right here so I'm going to cut two belts at 20 and that should give me plenty of room to make mistakes. Okay. So that's trash. E. Sorry to bring you guys in too far. Yeah, I think I did. God dang it. Alright, anyway. So, those are basically my two belts up there and I'm going to attempt to show you guys how I uh, replicate the buckle portions of this. So I've got two pieces of 10,000 wire right here in my hands and I know you guys may or may not be able to see it but <clears throat> The tweezers I'm using over here, basically, they have a tip just slightly over a millimeter. So what I'm going to do with both of these is basically just half them and pull them together and sort of hand form them um, as close as I can get them to what I want. And then I'll use my tweezers to finish tweaking them together and keep them nice and straight. They always do tend to snap to one side like that, but once you get them close, um, you can get, yeah, just like that when it snaps. And then basically for the depth of these belts, what I'm, what I'm using is basically just about give or take, it's all eyeball, but approximately the millimeter width of, uh, of that blade and then just give it a 90 degree turn. And we'll do the other one real quick. So again, half. Some hand forming. This is stainless steel wire, by the way, so thank God it's only ten thousandths, otherwise, it would be rather difficult to work with. I have some thicker stuff, which is good for forming like hydraulic lines on landing gears and things like that, but I do like the smaller gauge just easier to work with and of course
course this one's going to be persnickety. That's alright. I will just remain determined. And I'll get it here eventually. So I just sort of use the uh, um, tweezers to kind of keep it straight and in line. And then once again, once I have it nice and straight, another 90 degree turn. Roughly a 90 degree turn. Let's try that again and actually get a 90. <coughs> okay. So then, while I have these two small pieces in my hands, and I don't want to juggle them any more than I have to, um, the next step is basically to glue these to the bottom of those two harness straps. So, uh, what I will generally do is get in here with my razor blade and give me just a little bit of working room by inserting those on the razor blade itself. This guy needs a little bit more of a 90 twist on him, too, before I get too far. So I'll just sort of improve that a little bit. And then... These should be pretty close. I should be able to get these on the belts without any difficulty at all. So as you can see, I basically just have both pieces sitting on the razor blade as they are right there and that's just to split them apart far enough to actually get them on the belt so let me uh, let me get some glue set up and i'll be right back with you guys okay okay everybody we're back for the uh, dicey gluing phase so i've already split those two um attachment points and Basically what it boils down to here is just slipping these on to the correct position. close to the edge as I can and I'll offset them just a little bit so that'll be the left one and this one provided I do this correctly should be the right one Provided you get your openings far enough um, adjusted correctly, they should sit on there pretty nice. And of course I built two left hand ones, so let's try this for the third time being the charm. Come on, glue. Get on there. Dag nabbit. Okay. And then you 
usually they remain sticky enough for me to, to do this. I lay in just a very, very, very tiny bit, and this is medium CA, so it'll flow a little bit. And then I'll put just a touch on the back. Hello, Scott. Put just a little bit on the back. And then I got a little bit of glue on the buckle, so I'll try and scrape that off before it dries. just a little bit on the bottom and on the back side and then if there's any final adjustment to be made I make that very very quickly before the glue sets and hey what do you know Scott actually did it without gluing his fingers to his work Ta -da! So anyway, there's the two bottom um, buckle portions, and um, hmm. I need to take another measurement, but I need to give these just a couple of minutes to set up, so I'll be back with you guys in a minute. Okay, so we're back, and uh, let me see if I can get these end pieces. Uh, trimmed out here and then I'm going to add a very small piece of trim with some uh, 20 thousandth which for your information and mine is about half a millimeter 0.5 millimeter so <clears throat> let's see if I can get these bad boys um, trimmed out here and nipped I'm a little reticent to do this with the uh, with the nippers because I want a clean cut right here. can see those, the left and the right, with a little bit of fabric pattern on them, I hope. They should be right up here in the center of the window, center of the screen, <clears throat> trying to get them to focus. So, <clears throat> now let's take another little measurement and I will figure out where exactly I want to put my D-ring. So again, I would like these to hang down lower in the seat. Um, I'm just going to lay that here and get a measurement real quick. somewhere or inches seven millimeters somewhere between seven and eight okay so 
Now, here's where we're going to get fun. Um, off camera, I tried uh, mashing a couple of these down to uh, D-ring size, and they're not going to... It's not going to allow me to do it. If I'd have done it with copper, it might be a different story. But uh, with the stainless, it's not going to allow me to manipulate it the way that I want to. And I don't want to take the time to make copper ones right now, so I'll just use what I have. So I'll show you my other little trick. <clears throat> so roughly I decided I want my, my D-ring, and, and those would be like the uh, adjustment points, which would be like nipple height, you know, where you would yaw down on them to tighten them up. Um, and again, these are not to scale, they're not exact replicas, they're not perfect, they're just designed to replicate a scale detail. <clears throat> so, let me set one aside and we'll work on just one at a time. I need to get my glue set up again. And so here I have the belt. And here I have the ring and my my scale down here is just exactly for that so I can guesstimate this measurement. <clears throat> so remember how I told you guys these things were adhesive backed and they are. I'm basically just going to split the adhesive away and down the belt and I just use the razor blade to do that. You can see it coming apart. And I'm going to go about give or take. Seven millimeters on that one. Excuse my nose breathing, it helps me uh, regulate my steady hands, but... <clears throat> so let's see, I decided on about seven... between seven and eight millimeters. So essentially what I'm going to do is very, very carefully pick up this little ring and slip it over the top of the piece that I lifted. a little scale measurement here approximately at eight millimeters if I can get it to line up okay that is just about right where I want it except I try to keep the split in the back because as I form these rings basically I just wrap them on one of my small metal dowels uh, when I'm working with these things and um, then I just cut through them. So if I can keep the split in the back and keep that out of the detail that'll be better. So that is right at 7. Let me back it up just a tick. And then basically what I do is just burnish the tape back down to the backing. If you're a little bit fumble fingered and um, you can't quite do it, you can lay a, a little bit of a bead of uh, CA back there and, and you can adhese it all back together. But I don't want to, I didn't want to obliterate the fabric detail that I did on there. So now if I can lift it up, and the neat thing about this is, if you guys can see that, that is trapped in between the backing and the adhesive. So 
hopefully you can see that a little bit. You can see it standing up there. All right, wish me luck on the other one. Probably gonna need it. For this one, I'm not going to measure it. I'm just going to approximate it using the other one as a guide. Excuse the clanking, but it's necessary for me to work on a hard surface with this stuff, and I apologize for the whiteness of my background, but this is my only glass tray that I have, and it works out very well for these types of situations when I start scratch building like this. So again, we'll split it down just approximately. So let's see, I already have the left belt done, just want to make sure the right one gets in there okay. <clears throat> and for this one, it really does help if I preposition my ring so that when I pick it up and drop it on here, if I can keep that split in the back and out of view, it, uh, it helps me a lot. These are not my best tweezers. They're just ones that I had in my drawer. Damn it. Come on, baby. See, I've got that fairly well lined up. So again, just a good burnish on the back of that ring, and then a good press on the rest of it. And of course, I come off the adhesive paper a little bit. So I just realign and do it again. <clears throat> So again, I'm trying not to obliterate my uh, my little bit of fabric texturing that I did on here. So again, let's see if I can lift up that ring and show you guys that it is indeed trapped. Okay. So now basically we have both. Um, rings adjustments on there and let me throw them on the seat real quick give you guys an idea of where we're at um, close your glue Scott before you spill it oh my gosh actually I'm kind of glad I didn't have to use any uh, um, CA on that sorry getting a little out of camera here Mm -hmm. So you guys will remember, sometimes it takes a little bit of manipulation to do these and occasionally what I find is that the aluminum foil does lift from the, uh, excuse me, the copper foil um, lifts from the backing a little bit. So. Sometimes I'll float in a little bit of CA there just to just to sort of make sure nothing comes apart. <coughs> so as you can see, roughly, I got those just about where I wanted them. Um, just about. That's okay, I think I can make an adjustment. So, now, <clears throat> now that I have those two built and set there, um, I have a very small piece of, uh, um, of that 20,000th uh, styrene strip over here, which I'm gonna split in half 
and um, I basically am just going to lay it across the bottom of the buckle here just as a mm, sort of like a, a double stitched sort of you know one one belt on top of the other when I get it laid in there I, I think you guys will see what I'm after <clears throat> Actually, if I do this the smart way, so I won't have to do a lot of extra trimming. I think if I just manage to make my my two adjustment points here. Where'd you go? There you are. I'm going to go ahead and cut four of these. my third one. <laughs> Working on a white background is not easy for me either guys. I know it's impossible to see and I excuse my hand position here but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to get it done. So I have my four Teeny tiny pieces right there, and those will be almost, almost impossible for me to set <clears throat> without mucking it up on camera. Sorry, that one's just sitting out of the way for right now. I'm working on this guy. <clears throat> Sorry, did I just say inconsiderate pricks on the air? Yeah, well, nobody ever said Scott wasn't opinionated, because he is.
All right. Now, <clears throat> this is impossible for you guys to see unless I get it on a darker background. So let me see if I can do that for us. Yeah, sandpaper ain't gonna work. Here, let's just do this. Come on, Scotty, pull him in the camera. Okay. So if you can see those those little sprue strips, I basically just put uh, right at the end of the buckles, which would go into the crotch piece, and then right at the top of the adjustment buckles. Um, if I had the room to do these, I might actually do a couple of bolt pull downs from here. And to be honest with you, I could probably get away with it with if I get a longer piece of uh, of the tenth excuse me, the 20,000th stuff, and I could probably lay it in there for some additional detail, which would basically be just lifting it under that ring on the bottom, the one that swivels. Oh, provided my glue didn't. Did my glue glue it down? No, they still move a little bit. Good. But if you guys can see a little bit of that, I don't know that I want to go to that detail level on here, but actually now that I've already got that one done, I just freaking might. Um, but I am going to need to uh, get a little bit longer um, piece there. I'll run it all the way up here through the rest of this 20, and actually it, it'll give me the opportunity to bend them and quite honestly this stuff forms so easily it will uh, shape itself but I think it's going to detract from the center sternum portion which actually I need to take another measurement on and see where that's going to fall <clears throat> But roughly, if you guys can see what I'm doing here, I genuinely hope so. I'm trying to keep my eye on my work and my eye on my camera so that I'm keeping it in focus for you guys. Hmm. And of course, everything shifted as soon as I let it go. But as you can see, we are getting there. So it looks like I came out just about okay on my sizes. And to be honest with you, if I... Mm, no, I'm still going to need some more strips, so i got to drag that out of the bag. So anyway, let me give these a couple of minutes to... Uh, a couple of more minutes to set, and I'll make a decision on whether or not we are going to try and show you guys the uh, chest harness on camera <clears throat> or not, but for right now I need a out with the good or out with the bad, in with the good. See you in a couple minutes. <clears throat> Okie doke, boys and girls. Um, we're back. I had a look through my uh, Evergreen stuff and I found some uh, quite a bit thinner than what I was working with. It's uh, 10 thousandth by uh, 20 thousandth rather than the 20 by 20. So I think I am going to be able to pull off these adjustment straps and since I'm going to this extent to show you guys what I'm doing, I'm going to go ahead and do the chest harness too after giving it a few minute think. Um, I think I've figured out a way I can pull that off without interfering with anything else, but I'll explain that as we go along. So let me bring you back in, and you guys already know where we're at with the belts that I've been working on. Um, so I'm going to try and glue in 
Um, I've already pre-cut these off screen at 15 millimeters each. And I think that overall 20 millimeter length that I set forth will give me just about enough room to put these guys exactly where I want them on the seat. So <clears throat> let's see where this goes. So I got my strips laid out here and then these are the seat belts that I'm working on. I've already taken the time to flip my D-rings to the upright position so that it should just be a quick slip and glue type scenario. I hope, but I did just want to do one quick measurement on it to make sure I get my gauging right as far as my glue application. So, excuse me while I'm quiet and breathing softly. <clears throat> I could put on some music, but you know what? YouTube would go, Nay, that's copyrighted music, even though I paid for copyright infringement when I bought the music. So, you guys will just have to listen to me whine about it. <laughs> mm. Alright, one at a time, Scott. One at a time. Screw it up now, you've been doing too good on camera. So, dicey, delicate work. And then, just for good measure, um, I'm going to put a little touch of glue on the top of that D ring to make sure it doesn't come apart. <clears throat> Just a second to finish setting up. The medium takes a little bit of extra time to uh, set, so I have a, a little bit of fudge factor to play with, so it's not an immediate set. Eek.
what was it that uh, Dieter used to say on uh, the old Saturday Night Live? I'm as happy as a little girl. I normally don't do this well at, 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 at camera and detail work. Hopefully I'm showing you guys effectively what I'm trying to do. Thank God I film in HD because you guys probably wouldn't be able to see half the crap that I do unless it were in high def. So another little bit of glue on the top of that D-ring. And I think we're going to call those good for now. So there is left side and right side. God dang it, have I shifted my camera again? I think I have. So right in the middle of your screen you should be able to see if I can get them to focus, come on, focus, focus, magico eruptus. All right, so let me set those aside and then let's work on this uh, stratum harness. <clears throat> Mustache, so that's a good thing. But it would be nice to know where it rolled to. Jesus. Sorry, let me bring this out for just a second while I find my damn toothpick. I'll be right back. All right, the. Uh, search for the missing toothpick has been officially called off. It's now a body recovery. I'm sure I'll find it stuck to the bottom of one of my sandals or in my crotch or something somewhere. Um, okay, so anyway, let me give you guys another idea what these are starting to look like on the seat. And again, I'm, I'm not in a position to glue these tonight because I, I really need to prime and I want to paint the details on this uh, cockpit before I do anything else. But, <clears throat> as you can see, so I did cut them quite long, but that's okay because I, uh, I can manage that. And I think I found a nice attachment point for them as well right up right up here on a flat portion of the Aces 2 seat. I'm not sure if that's actually where they go, but that's where I'll be gluing them on my model. Um, so anyway, let's do a little more tricky stuff on the um, um, on the sternum strap. And sorry, got my goggles on here. I'm trying to look out from under them. Um, on one side, I'm going to be doing a this small, long oval pickup metal piece right down here. And on the other side, I'm going to be doing a flat buckle strap. And I'm going to trim it up with uh, some of this fine... Um, 10 by 20 uh, styrene strip that I have on here. So just to get me going in that respect, I want to take just a minute and lift up one end. I'm going to build it. <clears throat> I'm going to use this whole piece, but I'm going to build half of it on this side and the other half on this side, and then I'll trim it all up later. So I just want to lift this enough 
to get my oval piece in. It's going to be difficult. These are not quite as easy to do as um, the other side as far as getting it all uh, squared away, but I'm going to try. Now, because this is going to be an end piece, um, I very likely will put a little bead of glue on each side of that tape just so it doesn't come apart. And then I think I'm going to take that opportunity and I'll either trim it flat or, excuse me, while I'm out of camera for a second, I'm fetching glue. My toothpick is now in my mouth, not the glue side. So let me hold that for just a second while it sets. on there. Um, maybe not. Still, still a little wet and tacky. So I'll let that sit for just another second. Don't fail me now. We're too close to the end. We are getting there. Okay. 
So anyway, I have one end of the buckle there, and I'm just going to go ahead and half this thing because I don't need all of this. I'm really only going to need just a few millimeters of it. Okay. Mm. So there's one half of that harness piece. And then I just wanted to take a look through my scraps and see I would like a slightly broader piece to lay across the other end as a buckle. I just need to find it. <clears throat> Channel, rod, much wider strip. Alright, let me see if I've got any 10 by 40. I think I do. I just got to dig it out of the pack real quick. Excuse me once again, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, we're uh, back with what I hope to be the last of the detail work. So I found some 10 by 40 in my stash. Um, and I think it'll work out okay for this piece. So, hmm, I wonder if I got enough glue on there to do that. I probably do. Yep. Yay. Yay. It's like a Scalaton video with the kids screaming, Yay, birthday party. Just glued a little white piece on there, and then <clears throat> if I can add that very small detail there, I think I'm going to cut a very small strip of this other 10 by 20. <clears throat> piece there and then I might even augment it with a little piece of, of metal. Some more of that very fine um, 10,000th wire. Still got my glue tooth pick in my mouth so Go ahead and go for it. Mm. Sorry, I got my headphones wrapped around my sandal. Sorry, just scraping off my CA here. <clears throat> Alright, let's see how wider it looks on it. Yes or no. Something tricky here. Sorry, I'm not narrating what I'm doing because I'm honestly improvising, just seeing if I want to do this or not. <clears throat> just 
if I can pull it off, I might want to add just a very, very, very tiny little hook on the end of this thing. Yay, I didn't lose my hook. Nope. Gotta go back to the bottle for just a quick, quick second. <clears throat> Eek. Damn, Scott, sometimes you surprise yourself. Sometimes I do, guys. Sometimes I really, really do. <clears throat> Alright, need a couple of minutes to let that dry, and then we'll come back and do the final gluing on the uh, sternum strap. So, I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, everybody, I'm sorry this video is taking a good bit longer than I thought it would because, of course, I'm a complex individual and I have to be complex about everything. So, <clears throat> we're back for what I hope is the final gluing phase of the uh, sternum strap. So, I have the two seat belts laid out here and then the two sides of the sternum strap here, and I think I've figured out my final placement for each of them. So essentially what I'm going to do is just glue them on the back side and uh, give them a good press. So here we go. Wish me luck. I'm hoping this goes quickly and painlessly. I am again going to very deftly attempt to keep this in camera for you guys because my glue placement has to be almost perfect. Oh, come on, Scott. When do you ever end up with not enough glue? I always tend to get way too much. Yay! Dun, dun, dun. So, hopefully those won't stick to my paper in the back. Check them here. <clears throat> okay, not glued, not glued. Whew. Can you guys see those? God, I hope so. Holy schnoikies, man. Okay, dummy. finish setting. I'll see if I can give you guys a, a better 
look at what I've managed to complete here and maybe just a glimpse of how they'll look on the seat. Look at that. <clears throat> Told you I'd find my toothpick. There it is, right there. Good and stuck to my jacket. <clears throat> Thank you very much. That's a complete waste of perfectly good ways to CA glue. <clears throat> now these are basically going to be pretty flexible when I get them done so that's why I built them flat. Um, I just want to make sure that these are good and set before I manipulate them anymore. the other one for an example because it'll be a little bit easier to see I think so I'll be able to manipulate these up and down on the seats but as you can see essentially they're going to fit in that position so I'm going to droop those uh, sternum pieces down twist them around a little bit and uh, they'll hold their folds just right so That'll be one side. I don't know if I can do this left-handed with the other. Like I said, I'm not ready to lay them in yet, guys, because I still have to paint. Um, but I did just... You guys were so patient with me hanging out in this video for so long. I just want to make sure I got the placement right on those sternum straps. They might be a little bit high, but whatever. It ain't going to have a pilot figure in it, so you won't have a good reference for how tall he actually is. But I think that'll that'll be okay. So anyway, that's how uh, that's how Uncle Scotty builds seat belts. <laughs> I hope the video was worth your time. Um, I enjoyed making it for you guys. I always enjoy making videos for you guys, but. Uh, Whew, I think I've spent all of my fine motor skills for this evening. I was going to prime a little bit, but it's getting late and the rest of the family's already asleep in the sack. So I think I'll let them get a good night's sleep and just call it a wrap. So it is January 23rd, my brother's birthday. So peace, Steve-O. Happy birthday. I know I called you earlier today. Just wanted to say love you, bro, and take care. Um, for all my modeling friends. Thank you guys for tuning in, subscribing, commenting, liking. Um, it really means a lot to me. But anyway, I'm Scott, S3 Model Works. So you guys have a great night, and uh, see you tomorrow. Bye for now.